we've been talking about epithelial tissue and now we're on slide 14. We're leaving simple epithelial and we're journeying now into stratified epithelial. Can you remember what stratified means? Maybe you can remember the strawberry shortcake that you saw earlier. It means layered. You're looking at stratified squamous here and when we zoom in on the image you can see that there's a basement membrane and a connective tissue membrane on the very bottom so this would be something similar to fat for example and this would anchor this top stratified squamous down onto the body this is the most common type of stratified epithelial that there is it's a very thick membrane it does have several layers like what you're seeing its chief function is traditionally to protect because this is tough stuff. What you're looking at, for example, is your skin. Your epidermis is made like that. And it's made out of a tough protein called keratin. So when we say that it's keratinized, we mean that it has tough, dense protein. There is a non-keratinized or non-dead, non-tough type that's soft. And it's in the moist linings of the esophagus, mouth, and vagina, for example. When we also talk about stratified epithelial on the next slide, we'd like to mention this one here. This is transitional epithelial, and this is typically one that stretches really well. And when you look at it on a slide and you see the histology behind it, you can see that there is a layer here and here. There's also a layer of multinucleated area here as well. And this allows for stretching this way and this way and across and that makes good sense because it's found in the tissues of the ureters which are the tubes that run down to the bladder and the bladder lining itself and so it's good that this stretches because sometimes we need it to hold urine for a while until we can get to the restroom right now we'd like to pose a question on the next slide which is slide 15 asking you to think about um, different glands in the human body. I'm going to give you a clue. The pancreas is a gland in the body. Can you now come up with some different ones? Okay, maybe you thought of salivary or mammary or sweat glands. These are all really, really good examples of glands. So what is a gland? Well, there's glandular epithelial tissue, which is another type we're going to talk about. And a gland is basically something that gives you a product. For example, a gland works together, if it's a sweat gland, for example, to give you the product sweat. Salivary glands make what? Saliva. And pancreas will make, among other things, insulin, which you may have heard of. Speaking of the pancreas, it's the only organ that I know of that's both endocrine and exocrine. And that may not mean a whole lot to you just yet, but we're getting ready to talk about those glands and so we'd like you to make a note that glands are either endocrine which means they secrete hormones internally such as the pancreas or they're exocrine which means they can secrete to the surface of our body like the skin can secrete sweat and oil for example 